Hello and uh, welcome to the video lecture on organic synthesis retrosynthetic analysis. A video lecture today, I'm going to continue the series to continue to the installment is one 5-dicarbonate or one 5 bifunctional compounds molar retrosynthetic analysis. I'm going to one five bunny bifunctional compounds represent the consonant system. Therefore, ordinarily you will not encounter ampoulong reagent or ampoulong synthons unless you specifically choose to employ them. Even one three dicarbonate or one three bifunctional compounds that get the deuterium reaction uh, dominant role play. Kare. One is aldol, the other is glazen. Take the money, a counter just chosen reaction, it is Michael reaction the Michael addition which is the 1 4 or conjugate addition of a stabilized carbon ion onto the beta carbon of a alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound the enone or the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl is known as the Michael acceptor and the carbon ion which generates the enolate in the reaction medium which uh, adds to the enone is known as the Michael donor we cannot simply use a enolate here because that would lead to 1, 2 as well as 1, 4 addition. We need to stabilize this anion by adding a electron further electron withdrawing group such as CO2 et so that the anion first of all becomes soft and has a higher tendency to make a conjugate, a conjugate addition compared to a 1, 4 addition and also promotes equilibration because we know the enone and opore of nucleophilic addition why the 1, 2 addition is kinetically controlled while the 1, 4 addition is thermodynamically controlled so we need to have equilibrium in the reaction medium. The other important role that this electron withdrawing group plays is that immediately after the addition, the uh, compound, the Michael attack that is generated, that is also an enolate. We need to protonate this enolate in preference to the enolate derived from the Michael donor. Because if we have the enolate protonate, then that enolate will act as a nucleophile and it will continue to attack at the beta carbon of the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds which 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 uh, has not reacted the unreacted portion touch she can attack will be therefore the dimer trimer polymer therefore the ideal situation is that the anion derived from the Michael donor that should add to the enone generate an enolate that enolate should get protonated from the reaction medium and in preference to the enolate derived from the Michael donor and therefore its reactivity is no longer a concern for us so, if you have a hydrogen group, you can see the hydrogen group, hydrogen group, acidity group, and the corresponding conjugate base on a weak base. If you have an additional polygen, that would preferentially be protonated. And in fact, this will act as a proton source for that enolate. And that enolate generated from the addition of one Michael donut to the Michael acceptor will take away this hydrogen, itself will become the 1 5 dicarbonyl. And this will in turn become the enolate which will further react with the still unreacted enolate. So that is a consideration for Michael addition that we have to bear in mind. Or you could simply go for a softer version of the enol, enol or enolate that is the enamine which is derived from the carbonyl and the secondary amine. But basically it is a disconnection which gives you a D2 logical nucleophile and A3 logical electrophile. A3 logical electrophile is of course the Michael acceptor, alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound that you can get from again another A1 and D2 uh, synthon and you can do the aldol condensation but specifically manic reaction What happens if you have the oxidation state of one carbonyl change to that of an alcohol? But this type of transformation is actually very difficult because that requires a uh, Reduce selective uh, reduction of one of the carbonyl, uh, uh, carbonyl group in, in presence of the other. That is not, not undoable, you need highly specialized reagents for it. And if you think I need to protect Corvo, then I will reduce this, then protection step itself will offer a selectivity problem. So, uh, at our level, it's kind of a problem. So how can we do that? We can disconnect between the C1 and C2. Noting that this is C1 or maybe this is C1 and this is C5. So in that case, between C4 and C5. 
So one five dioxygenated functional group relationship is exploited, and I uh, take away uh, a one, which is a uh, aldehyde here, and a one C one, uh, which will react with a D four. Now D four, what can we use for D four? The easier that we can use organic material to use. So I can have bromine chilo. I can use gene to the so corresponding organic gene compound that we have. That that will probably add to the aldehyde carbon carbon. But when you are preparing this <coughs> zinc uh, organogen compound, you must protect this carbonyl because recall from the discussion of reformatsky reactions that we cannot use alpha bromo ketones in reformatsky because if we use that, the leje organogen ta toiri hobe, sheta ketone sathe reaction kore felbe, or that self condensation thi ke chole jabe. It does not react with organogen do not react with ester, therefore we can use alpha beta unsaturated. Uh, I'm sorry, alpha alpha halo esters. Uh, uh, and uh, cannot use ketones because is because it react organogens reacts with ketones. So so that's a that's a big problem. And we also know that ketone is more electrophilic than ester, so that is also rational based. So the challenge is to protect it. The protection is no problem. I can protect it by forming an acetal and then form the organogen, which is basically basic medium. Therefore, it can protection at each and then react with an aldehyde and then demask with dilute acid. But the important thing is how can we access this gamma bromo ketone, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 1, 4 difunctional compound. So think of it uh, by uh, replacing this bromine with OH. So if I am either a PBR3 by then I can get a bromine here. So that would give you a gamma hydroxy uh, carbonyl compound and then disconnect between the C2 and C3 to reveal. Uh, now that that's a D2 synthon, but that's a A2 synthon because this is one fourth bifunctional. Therefore, this is a dissonant system. You will have to use ampullan concept, and this obviously you know will come from the epoxy, which is the uh, which is generated from alkene from via prelysiac reaction, and that step itself is an ampullan step as we have already discussed. We can do that. Okay. Protection is absolutely required, otherwise, self condensation will happen. Uh, is there any other way to do this? Yeah, we can change the polarity here. A1, D4, or whatever, I can type D1, A4, but that is deliberately inviting you know, uh, uh, illogical nucleophiles and illogical electrophiles into the play. A4 illogical that will become the gamma bromo ketone carbonatory ampullon choreamrican organogen tavanichilla. So, if I could use something which, act, which can act as a nucleophile here, then it will probably undergo a SN2 type reaction. So, we can think of it. oxidation level change then that's an acyl anion. So we can derive it from the uh, thioacetal, and that can be derived from, you know, the aldehyde. So that's the ampullon step that we that we are in, using. So if we do that, we have to also remember derived I need to protect the carbonyl as well. Because carbon is the protect nakuri, to the carbon anti can be attacked with the party. So first a protect correct, you don't have to the reaction color, I think the reaction color, but you will get this one. This is a oxyacetal, that is a thioacetal. So thioacetals can be selectively cleaved by using mercury salts. And once you reveal the carbonyl here, then you reduce it. Reduce it to the CHOH because the secondary alcohol oxygen state is all that you need. Because it gives you the demasking coro, it gives you the demasking coro, then you will be end up ending up with carbonyl here, carbonyl here, and you cannot possibly reduce one not reducing the other. That's a selectivity problem that we want to avoid. Therefore, eight a age kulo, kule take a reduce coro, even tarpore eight a acid dilute acid the echo. So thiodithyacetal cleavage in presence of acetal can be done. Again, the same thing, delta hydroxy carbonyl compound. But this time we choose to disconnect between the 1, 2, 3, 3 and 4 and reveal the A2 illogical synthon and the D3 which is illogical synthon. A2 illogical is obviously from an epoxide and uh, D3 illogical will be coming from a beta bromo ketone. Beta bromo ketone will come from alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound uh, when it reacts with HBr and hydrous HBr. The Markovnikov addition reduced selectivity will be followed. The plus charge will be more stable here away from the carbonyl, so bromine would go here. And for sure, when you are uh, when you are making this nucleophilic, you will have to do uh, the reaction on the protected version. Otherwise, again the cell condensation will take place. Finally, check whether the 
B3 symptom will will in fact attack the epoxide here. Yes, it will attack because this is organometallic thing. Therefore, the medium is basic, and basic medium is pure SN2 cleavage by epoxide, and that means in this area, the specifically attack will be reduced selective, reduced selective attack will be, and we don't have any problem there. So, it is what it is. Uh, finally, we have this symmetrical 1,5 dicarbon target, which we have already discussed. This can be disconnected by installing couple of CO2 T groups here, do an FGA, double FGA in fact. And then disconnect here and here. So get two equivalents of this R1 CO CH2 CO2 T. Uh, this will be like R1, sorry. So R1 CH2 CO R1 CO CH2 CO2 T and central carbon third and a buto leaving group like CH2 I2. That is diiodometer. We have done this before. So strategies two, three, and four. Therefore, they have at some point they have. Ampoule reagents and therefore they are kind of difficult to access, but several protocols have been developed in these lines. But uh, to be honest, Michael reaction remains the most useful method for the synthesis of 1,5 dicarbonyl compounds, and our discussions will focus mainly on that. So let us take a, a few examples. First example is an anhydride, and you you can't see that you know uh, the 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 Uh, one three relationship is kind of more obvious than the one five relationship, but there is a one five relationship. So disconnect it at this juncture and reveal the beta methyl butyric acid, which is now an obvious one five dicarbonyl target. Consider it as a derivative of acetic acid. So the acetic acid part will come from a D two symptom represented by the diethyl malonate, which will afford the Michael donor in presence of a base. And this time you have a A three symptom. You cannot possibly have a CO2H here because if you add a CO2H and you add this add into this the enolate derived from the diethyl malonate, it will only do an acid-base reaction and nothing further will happen. Therefore, you have to protect it as a CO2T for good measure. You have couple of CO2Ts here because that thing, the alpha beta unsaturated ester, it can be very easily synthesized from uh, acetaldehyde and diethyl malonate in presence of a base via the Novenagel reaction. So this is your A3 synthon and that is your D2 synthon. So they will react. So you will have one CO2T more here. The other CO2T also is here, and these are also CO2Ts. But you can know, you can you know you know you know that you can uh, leaving the carboxylic acid groups very easily by hydrolyzing and then the carboxylation. So that's uh, that's a that's a that's a good reaction. But and and also this is when it is really. Found in literature, the literature report says that this is a one-pot reaction. So you first of all do the Novenagel, and then do the Michael reaction. So that's a cascade. Two equivalents of DEM and one equivalent of acetaldehyde is mixed in presence of pyridine SUH and refluxing benzene. So one equivalent reacts with acetaldehyde to form this one, uh, the Novenagel product, and the other equivalent then awaits patiently. And once this is formed, this undergoes the Michael addition, then followed by hydrolysis and decarboxylation gives you the beta methyl butyric acid. The next carb uh, target molecule does not have any one five by functional relationship, but it will have uh, such a reaction, such a relation if you put a carbonyl here, FGA or by FGI reduction, whatever you call it. So this will definitely require a chemoselective reduction, a chemoselective deoxygenation. Uh, in presence of the CO2, this C double bonded O will have to be CH2. We have to be made CH2. That can be done. Wolf-Kirchner reaction. Wolf-Kirchner has basic medium. Therefore, this CO2 H will be deprotonated, and this carbonyl will be like you know that that will form the hydrogen and etc. etc. The CO2 H group will not form any kind of hydrogen or anything, so it will remain intact. Only deprotonation will take place. So now you have your 1,5 dicarbonyl target. And think of it again as a derivative of acetic acid. So that part is coming from them. We have we know that the A3 synthon is obviously alpha beta unsaturated ketone derived from benzaldehyde and acetophenone. So that's a cross adjuvant reaction where you don't have to worry about the um, control because uh, acetophenone is the one which has the alpha hydrogen. Benzaldehyde lacks alpha hydrogen, and after the formation of uh, uh, you know the enolate, it is the Uh, benzaldehyde, which is more electrophilic, therefore it will act as the uh, electrophile. So there is no chance of cell condensation of 
acetophenone as well. So no control is needed for this type of adrenal reactions. Life is very easy here. Next up is a 1,3-dicarbonyl compound. So think of intramolecular cleansing that is nothing but Dickman. So that reveals, gives you a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 6 dicarbon. That we have not done yet. We will do that, but we have not done yet. So can we manipulate this to make it a 1, 5 difunctional? And if we if we want to make it a 1, 5 difunctional, maybe we will have to knock this u group out in our retrosynthetic analysis. Something, it can be converted to something which can act as a nucleophile and can act at, at the end of the chain, something like that. So this u with an FGI converted to cyan. That is something which you are not doing, remember. This is something which you are thinking. So basically you will have to do this transformation. Cyanide case U2H kore, tapa C2H kore. So we have to FGI kore, cyano kore, because cyano kam yehan teke chen teke bar kore dite pari. And I can install a living group like OTS here. If I have a OTS, then now, have, now, now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 5 difunctional relationship. So OTS means OH. OH means kind of CO2H because CO2H reduction will CH2H away. So again, that reduction step will require protection of this carbonyl. Otherwise, reduction of the CO2H to primary alcohol in presence of carbonyl is difficult to do unless you protect it. So that protection will be needed for as a form of an acetal. And that protection will serve me later as well. So when I move on this direction, when I am adding cyanide on this OTS, if this carbon is free, then cyanide may not attack here. Cyanide may even attack here and form the cyanohydrate. That is a very distinct possibility. And therefore, this has to be protected, which was previously done when we wanted to reduce the CO2H group to CH2H. So again, disconnect it as a 1,5 di di dicarbonyl and get a A3, which is a cyclohexanone. You can do the selenopope on cyclohexanone or coming from any soul's birth reduction, something that we already know. And this is again a derivative of uh, uh, acetic acid. Therefore, the D2 synthone corresponds to the diethyl malonate. And this is the forward synthesis, protection, reduction, tosylation, SN2, conversion of cyano to CO2 T, deprotection and then Dickman reaction. So pretty straightforward. At least I hope that it is pretty straightforward. Next up is beta-beta uh, dimethyl butyric acid. We have done the, the its little brother beta-methyl butyric acid but this is now beta-beta dimethyl butyric acid. This uh, can be considered as a derivative of acetic acid and therefore you can immediately disconnect here where I got 1,5 dicarbonyl disconnection to reveal the D2 synthone which is obviously DEM. And the other part is an alpha beta unsaturated carboxylic acid. You cannot possibly have the acid here because if you have the acid, then again an acid based reaction will take place. So you have to protect it in form of the CO2 T. And that is not a problem. You can hydrolyze that. You have to hydrolyze and remove one of the CO2 Ts after all in the target molecule. And this alpha beta unsaturated carboxylic acid can be derived very cleverly by a haloform reaction on, from this compound, which is, by the way, mesetyl oxide. And therefore, it can be synthesized by acid catalyzed aldol reaction or barium hydroxide induced aldol condensation of acetone. So that's a that's a that's a very neat reaction that you can have. Alternatively, you could start from dimidone. Now, dimidone is an important target because it's a 1,3 dicarbonate. Now, how can you convert this dimidone into this one? You do the halophon reaction, but then you will say the halophon kikura because this compound does not have any COC3 group. Neither does it have any functional group that will give me uh, COCH3 in situ. Because we know that uh, ethanol, 2-propanol, uh, those compounds uh, under the halophon reaction condition afford the COCH3 group, uh, which can be uh, further reacted and uh, can be made to participate in the halophon reaction. Although those alcohols do not feature the COCH3 group, they get converted into compounds which have those COC3 groups. But this compound does not have such things. But let us let us think for a moment. These hydrogens are very acidic. Therefore, if I add sodium hydroxide chlorine, then I will have a replacement of these two hydrogens with chlorine. And then the reaction should stop. But here we also have a Hard electron withdrawing group and that will prompt the nucleophilic attack of hydroxide on the other carbonyl. So these two carbonyls being equivalent, you can either choose to attack here or here. 
one carbonyl will be acting as an electrophile and inviting the hydroxide and once it attacks this carbonyl carbon and uh, this alpha carbon bond will break because the negative charge that comes here that is stabilized by the electron withdrawing group of the carbonyl. So that is how you trigger the halophone despite the absence of a third chlorine. Third chlorine cannot be there because there is no CH3 here. And this is very very similar to the Hoffman degradation of thalamide. Thalamide does not have any CUNH2. So you might as well say that in methyl acetamide, Jerobom Hoffman degradation dinosaur from thalamide to their partner, but thalamide can do that. Can do that. The current protome in bromo amide derivative to high, in bromo imide or a imide derivative to high, hydroxide attack for it. A can a CN bond a rapture or jun help for a carbonate just like a CC bond a rapture a jun a Jerobom carbonate attack for check, carbonate and help for check. So you can see the similarity, you should see the similarity. So as you are accepting this Hoffman degradation for the thalamide, you should also accept that dimido will undergo halophone reaction and if, it, and if it does undergo the halophone reaction then you will get a CO2, CO2H and uh, CO3H3 here and that CO3H3 will you know yeah, uh, not a CO3H3 but due to, due to chlorine factor okay? but you can in fact under the reaction condition convert it to a CO2H. So dimidone under this reaction condition of halophone will give you the beta beta dimethyl butyric acid. However dimidone itself it's a 13 dicarbonate. So think of it Dickman in fact kind of a Dickman. COME, CO2T. So that's again a 1 5 dicarbonyl relationship. Think of it as a derivative of the acetic acid. In that case, you are ending up with DEM and mesetyl oxide, which is coming from acetone, or you can disconnect it here. Think of it as a derivative of acetone. If you think in that term, then this will this D2 will come from methyl acid acetate. Ekhane jero kom D2 ta DEM theke ashche, ekhane D2 ta ethyl acid acetate theke ashbe. Ar ei part ta jero kom methyl ta jero kom mesetyl oxide theke ashche, ei part ta ashbe. To mesetyl oxide theke derived alpha beta unsaturated carboxylic acid ester kothi. So one way or the other, you are going for either a DEM or a ethyl acid acetate, and then you are going for either the mesetyl oxide or mesetyl oxide derived alpha beta unsaturated carboxylic acid ester. And here is the, at least a part of the uh, synthesis, forward synthesis. Acetone aldol condensation gives you mesetyl oxide, mesetyl oxide reacts with diethyl manonate um, in presence of sodium ethoxide. Michael reaction gives you this one. This is the most acidic hydrogen, but uh, abstraction of this hydrogen and formation of this enolate will not close down the ring. Actually, it will close down the ring, but this is so strained that Pleasant condensation being reversible, it will also open up again. But if this type of thing happens, then that is kind of stable because six member ring to you, then you add H3O plus. So you get this one, knock it out by hydrolysis followed by acidification and then heating decarboxylation. The other important name reaction, which amra same for a Robinson annulation, which was very closely related to the Michael reaction. So this type of, uh, this is a sequence where you do a Michael and then you do a intramolecular aldol. And you access a six membered ring with alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds. So here is an example where I am using 2 methyl cyclohexane monthly dione and then BK. This one is the donor, Michael donor, that one is an acceptor. So we do a Michael addition. So we get a 1,5 dicarbonyl. Fine. Now this when treated with piperidine and reflux in benzene so that azeotropically you can remove the water that is being produced by the aldol condensation you will have a six member ring constructed here with a alpha beta unsaturation so this type of moiety can be thought of as a target which can be accessed by robinson annulation this is named after obviously robert robinson the nobel, nobel prize winning british organic chemist so in reality, what you are doing is Michael first, then aldol. But when you are disconnecting, obviously you are going in the reverse direction. So aldol will come first. So disconnect here, alpha beta. Reveal the 1,5 and then disconnect the 1,5 diCO to reveal your D2 and your A3. In this case, this will come from uh, a methylated cyclohexane 1,3 diode, which can be easily accessed from cyclohexane 1,3 diode and deprotonation here. The cyclohexane 1 3 dione being accessed from the tautomeric form of resorcinol under pressure hydrogen nickel reduction. And MBK, by this, by this time, you should know by heart that MBK is prepared by a manic reaction between formaldehyde and acetone. 
Now we encounter another famous molecule. This is Hegeman system, named after Carl Hegeman, who discovered this, I mean, who first prepared this and uh, did many reactions on it. This is also called the, uh, the, the uh, timeless building block for natural products, because this is so important to target. And when you are naming these things, this, this compound that we have previously discussed is also a famous one. This is whale and measure ketone. We will see another such ketone here, but that time the six member ring will not be six member, it will be like five member. But let's concentrate on the hegemon sister. Hegemon sister, we cannot immediately see the 1,5 dicarbonyl, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There is a 1,5 dicarbonyl relationship, but more importantly, we, we have an alpha beta unsaturated thing, six member ring. So disconnect it. So do the L one. Reveal 1,5. Think of it as a derivative of ethyl acetate and then disconnect here. So the D2 synthon will come from that's a D2 that this will come from uh, you know the the DEM uh, no no not DEM ethyl acetate and this one will come from the methyl ketone again again and again you know the drill you know the drill by, by this time you should know the drill. Now let me pause here for a moment and tell you one thing. Hegemon sister this disconnection and the forward synthesis is totally acceptable at your level. But if you think carefully this is not a very good strategy. In fact, this reaction was done by Novenagel, Levin Novenagel himself. And he did it this way. But his yield was not very good. He did not bother because he wanted to make the molecule and that was it. He was not trying to optimize the situation or something like that. But what compromises the yield, if you ask, then take a look at the 1,5, revised 1,5 dicarbonyl target. Your desired reaction is renovated formation from here and aldol reaction here so that you get the magenta colored hegemon sister, but there is no way that you can stop enolate formation from this carbonyl from this side and attack here so that you get the blue isomeric product which is not hegemon sister. And this is happening because your 1,5 dicarbonyl is not symmetrical. This carbonyl has a CO2 here and that carbonyl does not have a CO2 here. So can I solve this problem? We have to symmetrize it. We have to symmetrize the 1,5 dicarbonyl. So add a CO2 here. Because I cannot possibly remove this CO2 here. First of all, I need the CO2. And secondly, if I remove this CO2 from my revised target, then the Michael reaction will actually fail. We know that simple anodes are not capable of undergoing Michael reaction very well. Because of several reasons that we have outlined previously and in the beginning of the lecture as well. So you need an FGM to convert it to a revised, re-revised 1,5 dicarbonyl target. And that is symmetrical. ডাইসিওর so, doing this thing, I will have this CO2 group here. How to get rid of it? How to get rid of it? Because this is, you know, alpha to CO2 and this is alpha beta gamma, uh, alpha to carbonyl and this is like gamma to carbonyl. This is done by refluxing the whole thing with sodium methoxide and ethanol and then treating it with acidic acid. That's a reverse glaze and condensation. And you are surprised. And you should be. If you remember a little bit or at least anything about reverse glazen, then reverse glazen should not happen here. At least your perception should say that reverse glazen should not happen here. Because reverse glazen are typically discussed for those systems when you treat this type of things with sodium methoxide and ethanol, it cannot abstract any hydrogen here because there is no hydrogen here. Instead, the sodium methoxide acts as a nucleophile instead of acting as a base and attacks here and then eventually ruptures this carbon-carbon bond to give you actually the acyclic diester. That acyclic diester then undergoes a Claisen reaction or Claisen condensation where negative charge is formed at this position and then this attacks these CO2 D groups, closing down the ring, gives you another new 1,3 dicarbonic compound where you do have the active hydrogen and that is taken away by sodium methoxide and this happily forms in the reaction material. After acidification, you will get this compound. 
And if you look at hydrogen sister, this place, the reverse placement should not happen because I do have a hydrogen here. And so all I expect is that abstraction of this hydrogen and formation of this enolate. That should be the end of the story. Then why is it happening? Well, this is because our perception and probably our teaching method is a little bit flawed because when we teach reverse place and condensation, the emphasis is so much on this type of thing that people get the idea that reverse place will happen only on this type of uh, this type of 1,3 dicarbonyl compounds where you do not have a hydrogen. But if you look carefully, this is your Claisen product, say beta keto ester. So you add ethoxide. Ethoxide can act as a base and normally it does act as a base and just takes away this hydrogen and gives you the resonance stabilized renolate which on acidification reveals the 1,3 dicarbonyl target. That's the Claisen condensation. But is it totally inconceivable to see that this thing can in fact act as a uh, not as a base but as a nucleophile? Can it act as a nucleophile? Actually yes. And if it does so, then a reverse Claisen reaction may very well happen, giving rise to rupture of the carbon-carbon bond. And that's exactly what has happened here. If you set up the condition right, then you can knock this u 2 t group out via a reverse laser condensation. So in that case, you are promoting the not the nucleus, not the uh, basic behavior of sodium ethoxide. If you are patient enough and do this reaction, then under appropriate condition, you have to find the condition where sodium ethoxide will in fact knock this thing out. And that is what is happening. So Hegemon sister Duto synthesis is a little bit of complicated symmetrization, etc. etc. Then knocking out this utility. If you don't want to bother your brain with this type of details, then go for the simple one. It, uh, it, 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 it derived from MBK and ethyl acid acid. So no problem there. At your level, that is completely acceptable as I have told you before. Um, I have a six member ring with a carbonyl, therefore, this is a cyclohexanone, two, three, three ethyl, three methyl cyclohexanone. So, okay, think of it as a you know a derivative of cyclohexenone where a beta carbon has suffered a nucleophilic attack from a um, Gilman cuprate which supplies the ET minus. Need the Gilman cuprate here, cannot use organomagnesiums or organo, uh, organomagnesiums or organozine. Uh, I am not using organomagnesium or organolithium because I need the soft soft center so that one for addition is promoted. So revised target is this one. It is very easy to connect with this one. You have to use this one as well as carbonyl, you have to use COAB, you have to use this one as well as the one you need a CO2 ET group here. Okay, so that's a Hedgeman sister, but Hedgeman sister is the same thing. Actually, you have to use this one as well as the CO2 ET group. I could then make the Hegemon sister in a good deal and that part Hegemon sister can be synthesized as we have discussed before but now the challenge is to access this one from that one to access this one from that one I need to knock out this one as well as this one that can be done by hydrolysis and decarboxylation because this is beta keto ester no problem this is beta keto ester I get the hydrolysis and decarboxylate hobby but this CO2 ET group this is alpha ropoidal CO2 ET so that is alpha beta gamma rho which and alpha beta mass can double bond which so we can very much call it the vinylogus beta keto ester and therefore any reaction that you can conceive for this one will also be applicable for this one and then we will get a decarboxylation a preferential decarboxylation for for uh, uh, for this one as well as that one so due to you will have a double decarboxylation via hydrolysis followed by heating with dilute trace 2 so will give you this uh, typical 3 methyl cyclohex 2 in 1 1 which, when treated with corresponding Gilman cuprate, will give you the enolate, which on acidification will give you the desired target molecule. Uh, similar looking, but we have a methyl here. Add CO2 ET again, do the CO2 ET thing, but this time this is not Hegemon sister, this is a methyl here. And Hegemon uh, sister or methylation put the problem. So just alpha beta get disconnect kore diya dhyapo, ehi jaya gata you have a ethyl acid acetate, you also have ethyl acid acetate. So you could potentially have a CH3, CH, I2, but oro pore nucleophilic attack for probably too sterically hindered. So we can think of better methods. Think of Michael. 
এই জায়গাটাতে চলে এসো a3 d2 d2 তে চলে গেল ইথাইল অ্যাসিড অ্যাসিডেট নো প্রবলেম a3 ইজ অবভিয়াসলি কামিং ফ্রম কন্ডেনসড নমিনাল রিঅ্যাকশন অফ ইথাইল অ্যাসিড অ্যাসিডেট এন্ড অ্যাসিডেট সো দ্যাটস নট আ প্রবলেম আই থিং দ্যাট কিটোন দ্যাট উই টকড अबाउट যে 5 6 মেম্বার ছিল এখানে উই ক্যান মেজার উই ক্যান মেজার কিটোনটা এই দাও 6 মেম্বার ছিল 6 6 3 5 দিস ইজ হ্যাজোস প্যারিশ কিটোন 6 5 তো 65 এই ধরনের সিস্টেম আমরা দেখেছি 6 মে 6 মেম্বার ট্রি সাইক্লোহেক্সিনন টাইপ মোটি আছে সো দ্যাট মাস্ট বি এলডল এন্ড দেন দেন ইন आवर ইন্টারেস্টিং দ্যাট অ্যানালিসিস শুড কাম মাইকেল সো দ্যাটস আ রবিনসন টার্গেট মাইকেল যদি কাটি তাহলে আমরা পেলাম হচ্ছে a3 a3 ইজ নট আ প্রবলেম ফর আস দ্যাটস আ এমবিক এই পার্টটা চলে আসছে d2 এর আগে আমরা এই ধরনের d2 কে দেখেছিলাম 6 মেম্বার ট্রি এর জন্য সাইক্লোহেক্সিন 1 3 ডাইওন থেকে এসেছিল বাট দিস টাইম উই হ্যাভ 5 মেম্বার ট্রি সো উই ক্যানট পসিবলি ইউজ দি সাইক্লোহেক্সিন 1 3 ডাইওন প্রত্যেক আসবে প্রথমে মিথাইলেশনটাকে প্রথমে একটা মিথাইলেশন ভাগ করব তো অবভিয়াসলি আই নিড আ 1 3 ডাইকার্বনিল ফাইভ মেম্বার সো দিস ইজ সাইক্লোপেন্টেন 1 3 ডাইওন প্রত্যেক আসবে থিংক অফ ইন্টারমোলিকুলার ক্লেজন 1 3 ডাইকার্বনিল ডিসকানেকশন করো সাইড উইথ দ্য CO2 টি এন্ড CO ইজ আ CO CH3CO দ্যাটস আ 1 4 ডাইকার্বনিল সো আই নিড আম পোলাম কাটো মাঝখানে থেকে কাটো কাটলেই এটা এ2 ইলোজিক্যাল হয়ে গেল এ2 ইলোজিক্যাল উইল কামিং ফ্রম আলফা ব্রোমো এস্টার এন্ড দিস ওয়ান ডি2 উইল কাম ফ্রম দি ইথাইল এস্টার অ্যাসিড so one for dicarbonyl should involve illogical electrophiles and we are seeing that yeah it is doable we can do that there will be like extra co2 groups which has to be hydrolyzed decarboxylated and then finally you will have to again uh, again you know uh, uh, do the michael reaction etc etc so all these things will have to have to be done but this strategy looks more or less okay simple six six fusion with uh, cyclohexene on it and looks closely similar to weiland mesher but weiland mesher had a methyl here and a carbonyl here that is not present here so synthesis will be a little bit tricky need to disconnect here reveal 15 dicarbonyl via aldol then go for the michael disconnection 15 dicyo michael now you get a d2 and a 3a3 not a problem for us hopefully it's not a problem for us at least i hope so d2 you cannot possibly use cyclohexanol because if you use cyclohexanol then michael reaction will fail as we know so therefore i need to have a co2t that co2t can be included on cyclohexanol by a glazing condensation by either using the diethyl oxalate or using the diethyl carbonate if you choose to use the oxalate then you will have to do a decarbonylation because one carbon oxide double bond is extra here so you might as well go for diethyl carbonate but you have to have this active methylene compound otherwise the michael reaction will not 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 occur because that's a non stabilized enolate and this is a stabilized enolate so this non stabilized enolate will go for something different and not michael so it is what it is um again six member being alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl cyclohexanol moiety cyclohexanol moiety and i have isopropyl group here so maybe disconnect here one five dicarbonyl do the a three d two need activation therefore i need to have a co two t here so from this isopropyl methyl ketone i can do a pleasan reaction to access this beta ketone ester will there be a problem in reduced reactivity because i have a hydrogen here so if there is a minus charge here and it uh, acylates at this carbon but that would give you something which is this one and that does not have any hydrogen left to be deprotonated which is the essential step for the glazen condensation so no deprotonation from the magenta side i mean there will be deprotonation but no reaction from the magenta side i i am sorry no uh, reaction from the blue side and all the reaction from the magenta side which has two hydrogen atoms left which can be easily one of them can be easily deprotonated and gives you the stabilized enolate which is the critical step for the glazen so you do have Uh, success in this reaction you don't need to use any sort of control or anything like that the pleasant condensation will go and then you have this negative charge here that c2 it is here so you can actually don't bother to knock out this c2 it and then condense for the whole thing with the carbon alpha beta unsaturated carbon it reveals this one i need to see that this thing closes down to give my target molecule we have a hydrogen here so can it close down for sure it can for sure it can by attacking this carbonyl but there is no way that you can dehydrate to access the conjugative uh, alpha beta unsaturated thing because there is no hydrogen here so that thing which was preventing the 
plays in from this direction we will also prevent the aldol from this direction and the molecule is such that you are set up no problem you don't have to think about too much of the reduced selectivity uh, at the uh, almost at the end now this time this is a very typical typical molecule again cyclohexenone alpha beta aldol reveals 1,5 dicarbonyl reveals cyclohex and carbaldehyde cannot use cyclohex and carbaldehyde because this is not a stabilized enolate so can I add a CO2 ET here? But if I add a CO2 ET here, then where is the hydrogen to deprotonate? If I add a CO2 ET here, then I cannot possibly form an enolate from this compound. So my CO2 ET strategy will fail here. But then again, I cannot simply use the cyclex and carbaldehyde and form enolate and then react the D2 with A3. That cannot be done because that Michael addition will fail. So what to do? Change your strategy. Go for many. I am sorry, sorry, sorry. Go for whenever I see, and I mean, somehow I think of many. I don't know why, but I do. Uh, uh, go for enamine strategy. Make a stock enamine. From cyclic and carbaldehyde, make a stock enamine. Because enamines are soft nucleophiles, there is no problem. It will undergo the 1 4 addition. It will form the iminium linkage, which will be hydrolyzed to reveal the keto so that you get your 1 5 dicarbonate. No problem, no problem at all. So that's it. It, 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 it depends on the uh, on the uh, on the structural variations, but the retrosynthetic analysis from targets five to eleven, all of them has used the Robinson annihilation strategy. S such a such a six member ring with alpha beta unsaturated thing will be there, disconnected to reveal a one five dicarbonic, and then disconnect to reveal the D two and the three C. Don't do the necessary modifications as you have seen. Now a little bit different. One five bifunctional target. This time we have OH here. This is the alcohol oxidation level. This is the tertiary alcohol with two similar groups. Can I do this thing with uh, hydration of alkene? Because if I do that, then carbonyl, uh, then this carbon-carbon double bond, if it is hydrated, it, the Markovnik of reduced selectivity will predict that the OH should go here. And if I do that, then this can be considered as a aceton derivative. The acetone part will come from ethyl acetate, and this electrophile is nothing but uh, allylic type electrophile. The allylic electrophiles have this problem or this notorious tendency of SN2 versus SN2 prime dichotomy. Not a problem here because anion derived from this one will be attacking the less crowded site, not the more crowded site. And even if it attacks the more crowded site, why should it attack the more crowded site? But if it if it attacks, then the double bond becomes less substituted in the product, so that's also unfavorable. So that's not going to work. So, this the corresponding alcohol. Of course, that would be from the corresponding alpha beta unsaturated acid reduction, and that is coming from the halo form. And this is nothing but methyl oxide. So, the whole part, this whole part is coming from two acetone molecules, and that part is coming from a ethyl acid acid molecules. Same thing again. Okay. Tertiary alcohol with two similar groups. Can I do the uh, Grignard thing on ester or something like that? Or maybe even symmetrical ketone where I use a methyl magnesium iodide. If I use a stoichiometric amount of methyl magnesium iodide and these two carbonyl compounds become uh, being similar, uh, either of them can react. And if I have a reaction here, then I will also get this one. If I have a reaction there, then I will also get that one. So the same thing. So no problem. Chances are very low that uh, you know a single dicarbonyl will consume two methyl groups. Maybe it will be the maybe it will be the product, but it will certainly be a minor product. So methyl magnesium iodide can be employed in this in this in this uh, on this symmetrical one five dicarbonyl. If you have symmetrical one five dicarbonyl, then who's stopping you? Take this away from CH two I two. Take this away from methyl acetate. Take this away from methyl acetate or Go for an FGA, install a CO2 ET, do a Michael disconnection, and it is this D2 ethyl acid acetate and NBK. So these are like very routine for us at this at this point. So these are the 13 molecules that we have discussed along with the five disconnection strategies. And here you are presented with nine target molecules of varying difficulty. I want you to uh, do the retrocentric analysis for them and write out at least the basic structure basic. A sequence that how, how can you in fact go about the forward synthesis of these target molecules. 
so i hope that you have enjoyed your lecture and i thank you for your patience and i will be seeing you in the next one